Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's review I'm surprisingly going to be taking a look at the Transformers Bumblebee Cyberverse Adventures Deluxe Class Optimus Prime. A toy line that I never thought I would be covering on this channel just as it is so out of my general comfort zone as usually I'm into the more generation-esque type figures such as Studio Series or in fact Siege. Whereas in this review I'll be taking a look at a figure based on a cartoon series that is currently airing, that being the Transformers Cyberverse series. Now the Cyberverse series I believe has been going roughly now for about three years, it may be slightly longer, to be honest I haven't really kept up to date with some of the cartoon animated shows that are currently on air, however I did know that this show was airing and all of the figures never appealed to me due to them all being gimmick inspired. All of the figures primarily released for this line were gimmick inspired, they were very simplistic and definitely not aimed at my demographic whereas this line is the first line where we're actually getting highly detailed, more complex transformations and actually deluxe class figures. This figure is in fact labelled a deluxe class and it is so surprising that out of all of this time the show's been airing, Hasbro have only just now decided to release more detailed, accurate looking figures. And I've got to say that I definitely think that this is a huge step up from what Hasbro usually tend to put out for this animated show. Not only did this figure appeal to me due to the fact that it was the first deluxe class figure that this line had in fact seen, but it's also the first Transformers line I believe ever to include a running theme of a builder figure. Usually we are used to seeing builder figures with another Hasbro line, that being Marvel Legends, whereas this is the first time we're ever getting a builder figure within the Transformers toy line. Taking a quick look at the packaging, because this is definitely something that also appealed to me, the packaging on these figures is absolutely beautiful. It's incredibly eye capturing and we've got a really awesome image of Bumblebee from the Cyberverse line. Transformers Bumblebee Cyberverse Adventure Optimus Prime. We can see here the Mac Adam Builder figure once he's fully completed and we can see highlighted the specific piece that Optimus Prime comes with. It does in fact state that it's a Builder figure. We've got the Transformers logo much like we do on the Siege, Earthrise and Studio Series toy line. On the side of the packaging we've got some phenomenal art of Hot Rod, Optimus Prime and Bumblebee all looking really really awesome. And then we flip around to the back of the box, we've got an image of Prime in his robot mode as well as his vehicle mode. It does state that he is in fact a 13 steps for conversion, which some of you may not believe to be that much, but considering this is based on the Cyberverse, I actually think that that is an incredible leap from what they usually give out for this line. We've got a super cool image of Optimus actually firing out a Matrix mega shot out of the Matrix of Leadership. So it definitely does give some context to the actual gimmick that this figure can in fact pull off. We've got a completed image of the Mac Adam Builder figure which I've got to say looks really cool as well as all of the other figures in this wave. Now so far wave one has been released that being Optimus Prime, Megatron, Shockwave and Bumblebee and Autobot, Hot Rod, Grimlock, RC and Thunder Howl will all be released I imagine towards the end of the year. So so far we've got the first four figures in the line. I really cannot wait to see what they do with RC that will definitely be a really interesting figure and I'm definitely going to be at least completing this first wave whether or not they do another wave or another builder figure is yet to be seen but this wave here so far from the figures I've got appears to be going definitely in the right direction. On the side of the packaging we've once again got an emphasis that this does include a builder figure that being Mac Adam and he definitely does look really detailed and cool however unfortunately the figure does not seem to convert. So with an introduction to this line now over I can begin taking a more detailed look at this figure himself and I've got to say that this is definitely a drastic step up from some of the other cyber figures that I've seen on the shelf so far. This Optimus Prime definitely captures the look that we see within that Cyberverse cartoon, as although I am yet to watch a full episode, I have definitely caught glimpses of the clips online, specifically on YouTube, and I've got to say that this design definitely does resemble what we see on screen. So this is really quite a cartoon accurate looking Optimus Prime, and considering that this is a deluxe class, I think they've managed to pack in a lot of great stuff with this figure. Now despite there being some amazing stuff going on with this figure, such as the overall look of him in terms of robot mode and as well as some great articulation some of these points do unfortunately come with drawbacks and the first of which is that I really do not like Hasbro's design choice of using ball joints on the majority of these figures as the ball joints are not as stiff as what we are used to with some of the hinge joints that were featured on the Siege and Earthrise figures. Most noticeably are these very loose ball joints in Optimus Prime shoulders. Now I've got to say that on Optimus they are slightly more stiffer than they are on Megatron's 
once I get to the Megatron review, I will be giving you a more in-depth look at some of the problems I do have with that figure. But the Optimus Prime, the ball joints and the arms are quite loose, meaning that he can't really pose very well with the blaster. And if you add any of the extra effects that this figure does come with, there is no chance of you getting this figure in a cool display pose, just as the ball joints cannot support the weight. Now, setting off his accessories for now, the head sculpt is definitely very reminiscent of an Optimus Prime design. We can see here that he has in fact got the mouth plate look. I do believe in Cyberverse he does in fact have, similarly to the movies where his mouth plate can in fact retract. However, Hasbro have opted to give him the mouth guard in this case. And there's some really nice paint details on this as well, such as some nice silver highlights, as well as a really nice almost all spark blue turquoise type of paint used for the eyes. We've got some nice Autobot insignias on the shoulders of Prime as well as some nice silver smokestacks. I like the blue sections here for the front section of the cab on his chest and we've also got some nice silver detailing here. We've got some nice silver detailing actually on the arms where the panels are however that is mainly due for robot mode aesthetic. We've also got these arrows here which aren't painted yellow however this is definitely a homage to the G1 design. As we move down to the legs we've got some nice detailings actually on the thighs as well as on the shins. Not much in terms of detail here and paint apps is mainly just molded plastic but we've got a silver gas can here, some black highlights on the shins and finally we've got some nice detailings on the toes. As we flip around to the back of the figure, surprisingly really not much in terms of kibble whatsoever. We have some hollow gaps on the backs of the legs however that is mainly due to transformation. I like the detailing here on the back section. This is completely covered within vehicle mode so they once again didn't have to sculpt this but I definitely think it makes the figure look a lot more aesthetically pleasing from the side and I do in fact have the waist dislodged so we do have some nice detailings actually on the crutch section of Optimus and just clicking that back in for the articulation segment. He does in fact have a ball joint which can look left to right as well as up and down and it can't really tilt side to side unfortunately. Once again ball joints at the arms which although allow for a fantastic range of motion they're not as stable as I perhaps would have liked them to have been. They can hinge out to the sides. He doesn't really have much in terms of this joint here this is due to transformation on Megatron you can in fact use it to get a butterfly hinge however on Optimus unfortunately that is not a feature he does have 360 rotation above the bicep as well as a 90 degree bend at the elbow the wrists are on ball joints due to transformation so can hinge forwards and backwards and rotate 360 he can rotate 360 at the waist which is really nice to see the legs can only kick forward that far and back about that far however he can do the splits to about that degree but as you saw if you do in fact disengage this waist joint just by unpegging it it does allow you to kick the legs all the way forwards which honestly I'm quite sufficed with doing as it allows for a greater range of motion on this Optimus figure. Due to these being on ball joints you can move the fires ever so slightly however I wouldn't say there's a great fire rotation joint. He does have a full 360 rotation just above where the knee is and due to transformation the knee can bend over 90 degrees and fantastically carrying over from Siege he has got some ankle rocker joints. Joints. These can hinge forwards and backwards and due to transformation can pivot forwards and backwards as well. So a super nice range of articulation on this Cyberverse Optimus Prime and definitely an upgrade over anything that we've seen on the previous Optimus Prime figures released for this particular line. Now turning to accessories, Optimus does come with his very iconic black blaster. This has got some nice details, however is unfortunately mainly hollow which is a shame. It would have been nice if perhaps one side was completely moulded in whereas the other side was hollow but here they have opted to just completely hollow both sides. It doesn't look too bad when placed in Prime's hands as the black colouring does wash out some of the details so from certain angles you cannot necessarily tell that it is hollow but it does just plug into his hand via this peg and this port and he can actually support this gun really nicely. It is just once again with the blast effect attached that he cannot support poses and bringing that blast effect in it's great to see Hasbro actually including blast effects with these deluxe figures which makes me think that if they can do it for these Cyberverse figures why can't they do it with the Siege figures? I merely think that's because they need to entice us into trusting this line again considering we've got really bad gimmick toys and adding nice effects like this is more likely going to appeal to collectors. You can see here that there is a huge port that you can in fact plug into the blaster however once it's in the hand you can see that the hand just completely droops in this case the elbow and the ball joint at the shoulder he cannot hold it whatsoever but you can actually remove this section here and just plug this small blast onto the end which I have found him holding ever so slightly better the elbow joint can support this however the shoulder joint just cannot support it whatsoever there is a certain point of where it just droops which is a shame but I'm sure some floor polish could perhaps tighten up these joints 
Another feature that this figure has is that you can in fact crack open his chest to reveal a really nice detailed matrix of leadership. This is something once again they didn't have to include but I'm so glad they did. It's been decked out in a super nice silver paint and inside is actually painted blue so that is really really nice and definitely gives you some depth to the character and this is where I really think that this blast effect does in fact play a more crucial role just aligning this up and sliding this in. You can take it and peg it into Optimus's chest and have him firing this huge blast out of the matrix. I've to destroy Unicron or to finish Megatron with a fatal blow. You can really get some cool poses which of course I'll post some images towards the end of the review as images towards the end of my reviews are definitely going to be something that you're going to see more commonly on my videos from now on but this is definitely a really nice looking effect and if you don't wish to display this on the figure from the front there is a port at the back that you can in fact just insert it into. However I do guess you could use this as if though he's using some power to thrust himself forward in order to charge into battle against the Decepticons. Before we get into size comparisons, the builder figure piece that Optimus comes with is the lower forearm section. It is piece number one. So we do have quite a few more pieces to go before I can begin to show you Mac Adam coming together. We've got a full set of seven figures left to go from Megatron all the way to Thunderhow. So as we begin to get through the first wave of figures, you'll see that the torso begins to come together. However, we're not going to see vital limbs such as the legs, etc. really pulling together until we get the majority of what I believe to be wave two of the Cyberverse line. For a deluxe class scale comparison, I thought it would only be fitting if I compared him to some of the lines that I have name dropped within this review, such as the Siege line and the Studio series. We can see here that the Studio series tends to vary from deluxe to deluxe. So in terms of deluxe Dark of the Moon Soundwave, he is more or less exactly the same height as this Optimus Prime. Although I've got to say that Soundwave does definitely feel a little bit more substantial than this Optimus Prime, perhaps because Soundwave is quite a squat character, whereas the weight distributed in this figure is slightly more elongated due to him being just I would say maybe just a hair taller than Soundwave but when comparing him to Siege Mirage you can see that Mirage is in fact taller than Optimus Prime and just looks overall a lot more bulky than this figure. This does look as if though they have reduced the scale ever so slightly however seeing as that all of the Cyberverse figures are deluxe class they're all the same size as one another which I guess is quite nice continuity as we don't have huge figures such as Bumblebee being in a leader class and then characters such as Megatron taking the deluxe class so I do just like it that they have just included one line one price demographic and I do think that it does keep this line quite streamlined I do not think that this Optimus is of the same quality as Siege but I still think that he is nice nonetheless and Mirage just doesn't want to stand up for me at all but still a really nice looking deluxe. Now turning to Optimus Prime's transformation it's definitely not the most involved transformation that we've ever got from a deluxe class figure but as stated previously it's definitely leaps and bounds better than some of the other Cyberverse figures that we've got in recent years. To begin with, what you're going to want to do is remove this blaster and just set it off to the side. We can then come to Optimus's head and here we're going to push this into this cavity. We can then bring this back section up and just tab that into place really nicely there. What we're then going to want to do is take this whole section and rotate it around so that this grill section lines up with this gray piece here, which will then allow you to take these and swivel these out on these hinges and they will in fact click ever so slightly into place just like so. As you can hear, there is in fact a slight click that you do need to hear. We're going to take these fists and as they are on these super nice ball joints, we can fold these in. I'm really grateful that Hasbro did include a ball joint as if they'd only included a hinge, it wouldn't have allowed us to rotate the fists when in robot mode. So that's really nice to see them include. What we're then going to want to do is come to these side pieces and just fold these out to the sides on both sides. Now we can turn our attention to these legs. You're going to want to take the feet and fold them up into this foot cavity here on both sides. We can then disengage this black crutch section from this gray piece and so take these legs and apply some pressure to this and just disconnect this and all of this should swing out to the back. We can then tab these two sections together here you're able to see that the ball joints can be quite loose. So this can be quite fiddly sometimes, but if you align it appropriately, it should just snap 
quite nicely into place. With that now done, we can do one of my favorite elements of the transformation and an element which is notorious with specifically the G1 Optimus is revert the arms backwards and plug these sections in. Repeat the same process here for this side. We're then going to want this slot here to plug into this tab. So lift this gray section up just like this, revert it all the way around and just snap that into place, ensuring that this black piece stays where you put it. And then take it here and just bring this arm in as well. And then bring this down and tab this side in as well. So we've got the front grille fully transformed. We're then going to want these red sections here to tab into these slots on the fires. So just align those up and give those a nice push. And then these red tabs here will plug into some slots on the insides of this gas can. So we're just going to want to arch all of this back. One of them has shot in real nice. And then just tab this one in there as well. And if anything's unpegged, just ensure that you do tab it all nicely together. And with that fully completed, here we have the Transformers Cyberverse Deluxe Class Optimus Prime fully transformed and in his truck mode. Now bringing in his blaster, we can see here that there is a tab there as well as a port, and this handle section will plug into the circular piece, and this tab here will plug into this slot. So you're effectively just going to want to shoot the blaster in there, and then tab this into place. And if this has come untabbed, just align it appropriately. And here we've got him in his truck mode. Some super nice details here, once again, that have carried over from robot mode, such as the nice blue painted truck windows, the silver painted side view mirrors. We've also got some window wipers decked out in a black paint app, some nice yellow highlights for where the front headlights would be, some nice details on this gray bumper, as well as a nice silver paint on where the torso is, silver smokestacks, Autobot insignias. We've got that traditional silver stripe on the cab of Optimus's truck. I would have liked it if perhaps we could have had painted rims. That would have been quite a nice feature to have on this figure. But seeing as this is the deluxe, I can let that pass. Some nice silver gas canisters. We can see here that some of the details from the toes have carried over and have become the tail lights for the vehicle mode. And we can take the blast effect if you want all of his accessories plugged onto vehicle mode and have that shot out of the back so it looks as if though he's using that to beam his way across Cybertron or earth depending on what land he is on so a really nice quite fun looking truck mode and the figure does roll really nicely as well which is cool to see some of these figures which have got the mushroom caps that peg in don't necessarily tend to roll too smoothly but i've got to say this is one of the few examples that do in fact work really nicely so in terms of a truck mode this is a really nice rendition of optimus prime very stylized and quite updated to go with the 2020 era of the transformers cyberverse toy line and for a more contemporary Optimus Prime comparison, here we've got the Cyberverse Deluxe Prime. Compared next to the Voyager Class Siege Prime, we can see here that this is definitely a Deluxe Class by no exception. This is a lot smaller than a Voyager, which it really should be, and really and truly comes to where the legs of Optimus begin in truck mode. It's not even really as long as this cab. So we can see here that it is quite a dainty deluxe figure. But once again, in robot mode, it's more or less the same scale as some of your more traditional generations figures. So I am actually really enjoying this line by Hasbro. So that was my review on the newly released Transformers Cyberverse Deluxe Class Optimus Prime. Personally, I've actually found this figure to be quite enjoyable. In terms of recommendations, I can only really say that this figure will appeal to you if you're into the Cyberverse designs. This figure definitely isn't going to appeal to all collectors as the overall design is definitely slightly more simplistic than some of the generations designs but in terms of an actual deluxe itself I think it does a great job in capturing Optimus's appearance from the cartoon I also think the vehicle mode 2 captures his appearance and the overall engineering on this is very sophisticated and is definitely up there with some of the mainline deluxes from studio series and siege I think he comes with a great deal of accessories such as this blast effect which can split into two separate components he also includes Includes a weapon. I think the articulation on this figure as a whole is great for a deluxe figure. They do seem to be taking all of the elements from Siege and implemented it into this figure such as the wrist swivel, waist swivel and ankle rocket joints which are all elements that I'm so glad to see carry over. The only thing that I would say is that I think some of the design choices of this figure could have perhaps been reconsidered slightly. Specifically the ball joints in the shoulders. Perhaps if they were on hinges we wouldn't have such a problem with looseness. There are some loose joints in the hips. Not 
as bad as the joints on the shoulders, but still something to be cautious of, all of which could probably be rectified with some floor polish. But if you're paying 20 to 25 pounds for a deluxe figure, do you really want to be going out and buying some floor polish to tighten up joints? That's something that I definitely don't want to be doing. But as a whole, I think that this is quite an enjoyable deluxe, and if you enjoy the Cyberverse designs, then definitely go for this. This is more advanced, definitely a lot more of an upgrade over the previous Warrior class versions that we've got earlier on in the years and this figure is definitely a fun figure to pose around. With all that being said, if you enjoyed this review be sure to let me know down in the comment section below and definitely let me know whether or not you're adding this Optimus Prime figure to your collection and if this new wave of Cyberverse Deluxes is a line that appeals to you on a collector or just a casual buyer basis. I hope that you enjoyed my review and until my next video I'll see you then. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>